Today I'm here with Megan and we're going to dive right into some of Basquiat's most famous artworks. We're looking at his horn player's triptych made in 1983. Yes, this is one of many pieces in which he had expressed his love and connection to African American culture. As you can see, there are two famous African American jazz musicians, Charlie Parker and Dizzy Gillespie, who are prominent figures depicted. These two guys took the traditional ways of jazz and mixed it up to make it their own unique sound. Basquiat was inspired by what they did, so he sort of took this idea of changing the old into something new and tailored it into his artwork by using ideas from artists like Picasso. Surrounding the musicians in the picture are many different words that relate to each musician. The word orthonology, for example, means the study of birds and was also the title of one of Parker's songs. The words pre and chan refer to Parker's young daughter and his wife, while the words douchey doobie relate to the wordless improvisational singing Gillespie often did. In order to understand this piece, one must have knowledge of music history and modern history as well. We can also see many of Basquiat's stylistic tendencies coming through in this piece. The use of a contrasted background, flattened figures, words, juxtaposition, and thick lines are what make this a Basquiat painting. The lines and colors in this work are randomly thrown about and demonstrated how he was not focused on balancing. Yes. He was more focused on contrast and juxtaposition and really getting the meaning of the painting across, rather than paying attention to the surface qualities. A big inspiration for his visual qualities were textbooks and other resources, specifically the medical textbook Grey's Anatomy. His mother gave it to him when he was hospitalized as a child. He even uses it to influence the name of his noise band, Grey. Basquiat typically did not have a specific patron for his pieces. They were normally created as a tribute to African American popular culture and to show how he was invested in it. Although the ideas reflected in Basquiat's pieces were very innovative, he still paid homage to other artists and horn players. It is clear that Picasso definitely had an impact on Basquiat's work. The use of oil type and acrylic paint in triptych format, for example, connects to how Picasso used these ideas in his work Three Musicians. The position of the figures in Three Musicians is also mirrored in the figures of horn players. This piece, along with many others, is what made art critics refer to Basquiat as the Black Picasso. Horn Players is also one of Basquiat's works that caused his sale price to increase by a whopping 600% and get him to be the youngest artist to participate in Documenta 7, which is an international contemporary art exhibition that takes place every five years. Another piece that evidently led him to his achievements was Irony of a Negro Policeman. This piece, made in 1981, is Basquiat's take on an African-American policeman as a figure who represses other African-Americans while being repressed by white supremacy. And it's purely an example of neo-expressionism. His thoughts on this issue are expressed through these key phrases, ideas, and symbols. Yes, you can see that he includes the phrases, irony of a Negro policeman, which clearly explains itself as well as the phrase pawn, which is believed to be referencing the idea that an African-American policeman is only in the force, so they appear to be non-racist. Not to mention, he also puts the policeman in a colorful hat that frames the head resembling a cage, to foreshadow how the constrained African-Americans' perceptions were. Basquiat goes even further and puts the policeman in a mask. And this is yet another symbol of the hypocrisy of a person who is more or less controlled by a white society. This figure was painted in such an abstract manner that it too appeals to neo-expressionism by portraying the human figure in such a rough and violent way. In this case, it is more to make the figure appear as an enemy. Though he also shows with the white background representing white society that African Americans live in a vastly white occupied society and are trying to thrive in it. Yes, and he truly portrays his views on how the oppressed people are then furthering their own oppression. 
sort of proving that there is more to African-American people than white society thinks. Basquiat also touches down and focuses on the tension within the actual artwork. He places a very prominent, flat, 2D figure with some vibrant pops of color. Yes, though the scribbled lines appear to be dominant as well. And while he manages to balance the shapes and colors, the tension of the lines break the unity. Not to mention, the painting is quite asymmetrical, tying right into the tension and confusion behind the piece. Both of these pieces reflect Basquiat's different perspectives on separate situations within the African American culture. One focuses on glorifying the musical aspects of the culture by illustrating two very famous and influential African American jazz musicians. While the other one steers in a completely different direction, representing Basquiat's personal views on the social injustice occurring around him during this time.